Good morning everyone, happy Good Friday. It's, I guess we can say happy because we know what it means, but wow, what an event. The intensity is just out of this world. It's, um, it's so central. I mean, it, it, it is the centerpiece of all that we can now celebrate as Christians, as people of faith in Jesus. We only have faith in Jesus um, because of this moment, this, the, the moments of this weekend. And so um, it's, it's so good that we can celebrate it. I had last week a, one of those creative, a little like a creative urgy thingy. <laughs> um, felt the need to express something, and so what's going to play next is a, a piece of creative writing. Um, recorded it, spoke it. Um, and it's a reflection on, I guess, the gravity of what Jesus accomplished at Good Friday. And so this, the, the recording is, it goes for 11 minutes, a bit over 11 minutes. So it's not something that you can just stare at the screen and try and take it all in. You need to get into a kind of a meditative um, space a space of contemplation listen to the words like if you need to do a colouring in while listening or if you want to just lie down and listen it's one of those things there's a lot of words in it and so you won't necessarily take it all in but have a have a um, I, I guess a an attitude of wanting to um, just receive different pieces. It, it, something may jump out at you and just reflect on that. Don't worry if you miss some of it, but um, it's not something to watch. It's just something to listen to, let it wash over you. And um, yeah, I, my hope and my prayer is that, that there's something in it that um, speaks to you of how incredible Jesus is, that he would go to the cross for you, that he would take that penalty for your sin upon himself so that you could be forgiven. And um, so get comfortable and just receive whatever God might want to say to you through this. Jesus. It wasn't a new name. It wasn't unique. It didn't command attention or hold mystique. It wasn't noticed by the prestigious, the ambitious. It didn't seem auspicious or propitious. Jesus. Ordinary. Commonplace. Quotidian. Jesus. If a name is simply a pattern of vibration in the air, a sound that hits our tympanic membrane, then the name Jesus is not much more than breath, the exercise of the larynx, and the movement of the tongue. But it is not just a sound. It is anything but ordinary, infinitely more profound, a name that's revolutionary. The person behind the name is the substance. Before all we see had form, before the beauty of nature could perform, before time and space took the floor, before our very first before, the forever existing one was. In perfect union, the Father, the Spirit, the Son. No tension, no miscommunication, pure communion. A love, joy and peace fusion, no intrusion, an all-sufficient conclusion. And somewhere in this space, there is a grand plan, a design for love to be expressed, in atoms, cells, oceans, mountains, and man. Male and female would be at the apex of creativity, his very image to be reflected for all eternity. 
Foreknowledge saw the mutiny, but didn't stop the decision. Omniscience did not steer the perfect one's movement towards self-protection. Humanity would choose rebellion and rejection in the name of arrogance and self-glorification, a new standard for every generation coupled with the poison of self-justification. All of creation would suffer the desolation. But the grand plan took this in painful consideration. The choice was to be vulnerable to searing affliction for the sake of coming reconciliation. The overriding joy of love connection laid the everlasting foundation for the story of salvation. And here, before any laws of physics were put in place, here, in the Godhead's love embrace, the Son chooses his act of grace. When the time reaches its fulfillment, he would step into the limitations of his creation, subjecting himself to the containment of a small and weak incarnation. He would become a little human and bear the ultimate cost of their insubordination. And so, the plan moved ahead. Springing from the heart of the triune God, the universe in all of its wonder, billions of galaxies scattered through the vast emptiness of space, spoken into existence, one planet is chosen to be the focal point upon which life is gifted. Millions of species all reflecting something of the glory and ingenuity of the Creator. And yes, the jewel in the crown, humankind. Very good. It was very good. A new relationship is birth. God and people. It was simple. It was beautiful. With nothing but ignorance to lose. Characterized by trust and given freedom to choose. Could we but pause this precious moment? For what comes next I can barely speak of as it leads to the shocking need for atonement. Enter deception. A figure of darkness captures the heart of these naive beings. The devastation ahead was unfathomable. The despair to be theirs was unimaginable. The chaotic afterglow was incalculable. It was an insurrection against truth himself, a violent coup against the very heart of all existence. Everything was held together by the one who loved and who is the very essence of love. With Adam's choice of descent, creation quaked with fear and grief, setting a new trajectory towards death. With Adam's choice, every generation would be born into the slavery of self-rule. Humanity's insufficiency would be forever felt but never acknowledged always highlighted, but never confessed. Justice demanded payment. Justice called for recompense. Justice was a claimant against this travesty that had no defense. How could such a minuscule creature think nothing of this offense? This was no light, trivial matter of minimal consequence. Deliberate and unprovoked abrogation of trust. Rebellion of the heart. Humanity's move was complete stupidity. And it bore a cost, death, life to expire. But this was the mutiny that had already been thought through. The sun had already offered himself for me and you. Signals, promises, pictures, shadows, types. God spoke and directed, steered the mess towards the only solution, the extraordinary means of absolution. One of Eve's seed would crush the serpent's head. Through one in Abram's line, all nations would be blessed. One of Judah's offspring would forever rule, it was said. Another, like Moses, was ahead. The blood of bulls, the curtain, the temple, the bread. The Passover lamb, to the slaughter he'd be led. He would make white as snow those sins scarlet red. By beautiful feet, his good news would spread. His place of birth, the nature of his ministry, the manner of his death and his overwhelming victory, it was spoken through the prophets of Israel's history. One was coming that would deal with this sickness, this poison, this self-induced misery. One would come as the substitute payment for this reckless insurgency. And then the time did reach its fulfillment, and he stepped into the limitations of his creation, subjecting himself to the containment of a small and weak incarnation. He became a little human, in order to bear the ultimate cost of our insubordination. And they named him Jesus. 
It wasn't a new name. It wasn't unique. It didn't command attention or hold mystique. It wasn't noticed by the prestigious, the ambitious. It didn't seem auspicious or propitious. Jesus. Ordinary. Commonplace. Quotidian. But it was the being behind the name that gave it substance. His entry wasn't glamorous. It wasn't quaint. He grew up under intense constraint, from filling all the heavens to being taught to finger paint. Enough humility to make any other person faint. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. For thirty years, very few even knew about him, but entrusting himself to what was in the human heart was abhorrent to him. For he came for a clear purpose and reason. He was not floating or drifting, not tossed about by every thought season. His focus was set before intermolecular cohesion, and he would see it through to the point of completion. To testify to the truth is why he came. The truth of humanity's sickening shame, and the truth of God's undeserved, unreserved favor he would proclaim. To bind the brokenhearted, release those imprisoned by inescapable darkness, to the bruised reed and the smouldering wick he was harmless. He spoke of hope and light, he gave the blind their sight, he healed sickness and disease, the most horrifically tormented he would appease. The authority with which he taught was like heaven's juggernaut. What manner of person is this? Jesus, the breaker of the laws of nature. But the fallen race could not handle him. At first they were moved and even excited, but they became confused and violent. They were too nearsighted. Sight so near it defined narcissism. The problem from the start, no concept of real altruism. He was despised and rejected, familiar with pain and suffering. Like one from whom people hide their faces, we held him in low esteem. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. He himself bore the punishment that brought us peace. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. In his place the freedom of a murderer was requested. The sacrifice of the perfect human for that pitiful, ungrateful race. Enemies were extended unheard of measures of grace. Mercy and truth are met. Innocent blood paying the unpayable debt. And heaving his last breaths on that sordid cross, he didn't waver in his faithfulness to his agenda. For the joy set before him, to death he would surrender. Bringing many sons and daughters to glory was the whole point of this salvation story. And when life was slipping from its very author, his final words declared a whole new order. Not by our own efforts at righteousness, or our self-attested claims to holiness, not by the work of body and soul betterness, or the good deeds we view as godliness. The new order, announced by his laboured sentence, was that faith in his work alone leads us to forgiveness. As his vision grew darker, he knew it was done, a blood payment from the one and only Son. It is finished. Jesus. It wasn't a new name. It wasn't unique. It didn't command attention or hold mystique. It wasn't noticed by the prestigious, the ambitious. But it was auspicious. It truly was propitious. Jesus. Extraordinary. Outstanding. Supernatural. Jesus. No other name carries the same weight. Jesus. To him I happily abdicate. To him be the glory, his name will I forever elevate, Jesus. Well, I hope that meant something for you, that something spoke to you of how incredible Jesus is, that he would choose to take your space your place, what you deserve because of his in intense love from the beginning 
from even before creation even began he'd chosen to make that sacrifice for you and for me I'm going to read from Colossians here um, Paul writes an amazing piece of writing here he says the sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority, authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God, and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death, to present you holy in his sight, without blemish, and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. How amazing that through Christ's physical death, his, his sacrifice on that cross, Through faith you have been reconciled to God. And now he presents you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. Isn't that amazing? So we're going to have communion now. In a moment, Lauren is going to play um, the song Lead Me to the Cross. And Liz has written some scriptures and scriptural thoughts um, over the top of, of the song as she sings. But this bread that hopefully you've got some in front of you, this bread represents the body of Jesus. The one who is before all things, who chose to become human. His body was broken. For you and for me. And his blood was shed. For our forgiveness. Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you that you would do this for us. That you allowed your body to be broken. You allowed your blood to be shed. So that we could be forgiven and washed clean. Our sins whiter than snow. And now because of your death, Jesus, we are reconciled to God through faith. So that now we're holy in your sight, without blemish and free from accusation. Thank you. Amen. So as this next song plays from Lauren, let's eat and drink together in remembrance of Jesus.
Thank you.